you're going to need to do to make this dress or the bodice of the dress is going to be pin the darts. So I've already pre-drawn on the darts and I'll do that for all the ones that I cut. Um, so all you have to do is you can see the dart nicely drawn on there. Uh, we're going to close this together and we're going to pin those together along that line. Now this can take a little bit of trial and error sometimes to just get it into the right spot. So I'm going to take a little bit of manoeuvring around a bit until you're hitting the line on both sides of the pin. Or hitting the line with the pin on both sides, I should say. So that's the front piece, all pinned and ready for the darts to be sewn. Now I'll pin the back piece, so the back is in two pieces, so you need to just make sure when you do the back, uh, I'll, well, what I'll do is I will only draw it on the wrong side of the fabric. Uh, you just really don't want to accidentally pin one up this way and the other one this way because then you've got two left hand sides and no right hand sides. The back would be a little bit easier to pin because uh, there's not any curve to it, it's just a straight line. Whereas the bust ones have a little bit of a curve to go around the bust. So that's all my pieces pinned. And these are ready to be sewn. Normally if uh, I was sewing something like this I would probably do a lining for it as well because it's quite uh, fine fabric and I just like sewing bodices with a lining or a backing. Uh, but we're just doing this single layer so we've only got the one back and the, uh, the two backs and the one front piece uh, so it's quite simple. So the next thing I'm going to do is take these to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew straight along this line that's been drawn in just a, single, a straight stitch um, on a normal, like a moderate length, so maybe two and a half, two, two and a half. When sewing a dart, we want to make sure that we start right at the very, very uh, point um, and it's actually right on the edge of the fabric or on the fold of that fabric. Otherwise, it will be a little gap. So there we've got our darts sewn. We now need to go and press these on the iron. I like to press them inwards, so that means uh, that this is being uh, pressed down that way and ironed that way, but make sure that you give it a good pull as well so that you're really opening out that little seam that you've created. So I'll go and do that. The next thing we get to do is to uh, put the side seams together. So if you lay them out with the good sides, so the side that has the nice seam part on it, facing upwards, and line up at the seams. Like this. Hopefully I've cut them alright and they're accurate. If they're a little bit unaccurate, um, make the longer bit like this. Um, down, you can see that that bit's longer there. Make it down the bottom rather than up the top because it's probably that I've added too much length to the bottom end or the bottom seam at the waist. So all you have to do to put the right sides together is fold this over here and line up 
line this up. I've done an approximately one and a half centimetre seam allowance. But if I'm feeling really nice, if I cut all of the fabric, I will uh, I'll draw it on for you so you can see the seam allowance. But otherwise, just assume that it's one and a half centimetres or the 5-8 guideline. That's going to open out to the seam there. And same thing on this side. Fold it over. Stick it together. If there's any extra length, have it down the bottom. If one of them's longer than the other. That's a needle, not a pin. This side doesn't have my seam allowance drawn, so I'm just going to do it at approximately one and a half centimeters. Probably a bit close to the one centimetre mark. I do tend to like some sort of middle here. But bigger is also good because it's got more room for me to let them out. So we're going to sew these two lines. Actually at the same time, I might pin my shoulder seams as well. So line up those shoulders. Um, if we were doing a lining on this, we wouldn't be doing the shoulders yet. As I mentioned before, we're not lining this, we're just doing a single layer. That is because, or partly to save fabric and time, um, and because we're already asking the performers to wear a singlet top, a white singlet top underneath. So we don't really need to worry about the fabric being a tiny bit see through with the design. So we can save that bit of money and time and not do the lining, even though it does look lovely with the lining. So you've got four seams there to go and sew. So now that these are all sewn, this is from the wrong side, um, and I've gone and pressed the seams open, so they're laying flat. Um, I'm going to overlock these as, as open seams. So that means I'm going to overlock each of these sides separately. Use a little bit more time, uh, but I want these to be open seams so that they're easier to be altered and um, changed if they're the wrong size. Um, so I'll overlock these seams. Um, also I'm going to see this cast member tonight so I'm going to fit this to her just to make sure well, you know, before I even overlock if there's anything that I need to fix. Um, and then the next thing is going to be uh, making the sleeves and adding those on. Uh, so I'll be back once I have um, check that it fits her, overlocked, and then we will, I'll show you how to do the seams, the sleeves. So quick and easy progress. So a quick update before I uh, go and actually do these steps. Um, I did a quick fitting with this cast member and of course because we've just come back from holidays, students grow a lot over holidays, um, so I have found that I do need to actually make quite a uh, significant alteration to this. So I have marked on the new sleeve line that I want to do um, and I'm going to transfer this to the student's pattern uh, because I will be using that same pattern for some other items that go over this. Um, I'm also going to need to do a whole new back piece so I'm going to just take the whole back piece off, make draft a new piece for that um, and move from there. So possibly this piece that is there might actually be the right size for one of the other students. Uh, we'll see how that goes. So it might not get wasted, but if it does, it's only a small piece of fabric. So it's not too, too big of an issue. Um, so I'm going to make those changes and then I will redo up to this step with the overlocking done. Uh, and then I will show you on the video what the next step after that is. I've now overlocked all of the edges of the bodice. The next step is that we're going to put the sleeves on. Um, so I've also just gone ahead and overlocked around all of the sleeves. Normally I probably would have overlocked the sleeves once they've been sewn on, but just um, with the nature of the way I'm doing this, I think it's probably going to be quicker to just pre-overlock all the fabric this time. So the first thing we're going to do is do a gather stitch along the sleeve. So on the sewing machine, you want to have your length up as high as it will go to create a gather and you don't back stitch for these stitches you're about to do. 
Um, so starting, you can kind of see, hopefully I'm showing the whole thing on the video right now. Um, you can kind of see where the gather is going to be, where it starts to curve around at the edges. That's where these gather lines want to be. Um, so you want to do them fairly close to the edge because you don't want them to get uh, caught up into the seam at all. Uh, or you do, sorry, you don't want them to be seen outside of the seam and be part of the fabric. So you want to do them. I'm using the edge of the presser foot as the guide. That's a bit of a pretty good guide. And then I'll use that same guide again for the next line that I do. I'm going to do two lines on each. And I'm not going to back stitch. One, no back stitching. And I'm going to actually, rather than cut it off right down close to the fabric, I'm going to leave a little bit of extra. And then I'm going to do one more line right next to that. And this line, I'm going to leave a little bit more seam allowance. So I'm going to use the, there's like an inside sort of um, guideline on the presser foot. I'm going to sort of use that as the guideline for where it's um, lining up to the first line that I've just done. I just said line a lot of the back stitching. Leaving a little bit of extra. Uh, then I have to go and do that on the other sleeve. Now that I've got these two stitching lines, I'm going to pull the bobbin threads. So if this is where I was just sewing it, the bobbin threads come from underneath might be a little bit hard to see the white thread on the white fabric. So I'm going to get the two ends of the bobbin from this side. This will pull a lot easier than pulling the top threads. Um, also, because I'm only doing a very short area that I'm gathering, I'm going to grab the two on the other side too, just to make sure I don't pull, them, <laughs> pull the whole thing out. So now I'm just going to uh, gently pull on it. And it gathers it up. Now I'm going to uh, not tie this off or secure these gathers at all for now because I might want to come back and adjust them as I attach it to the bodice. So I'll just do the other one first. I think I sewed it this way, which means the bobbin ones will be on this side. Yeah, I think that's the bobbin ones. So I've got a nice gather stitch. Um, and if I want to, um, I can press that down just to make sure all of these little bits um, are, are facing upwards and not coming down and potentially going to get caught in my seam. I, want to, I do want to make sure they're going upwards, so I sort of give them just a bit of a press with my fingers. I don't, it doesn't really need the iron to press it, and that just makes sure they stay up. Next step is to set them into a sleeve. Oh, sorry, no, one more step for that, we've got to close it off. So I want to put my right sides together. that short end, this piece is looking like this, and I'm going to sew following the 5 8 line, or about one and a half centimetres, and sew it down there. So making sure I've got it off the gather stitch now, because I don't want to gather this one. To do the right thing, you should definitely press this seam open first. That 
would mean on the iron. Is it a good iron? Yeah. I want to put my right sides together and then I'm going to sort of flip one over the other. So I've got the right sides. I know it's the right side because my seam is now on the outside. And I'm going to line up the two seams. So the bottom seam from the sleeve and the side seam from the bodice. So if this is the sleeve, the side seam down here on the bodice. I'm going to line those two up. And I'm going to pin a little bit differently. I'm going to pin going with the pin going upwards like this. And just to hold it nicely in place, I'm actually going to pin both sides of the seam allowance just to make sure it's laying flat on both sides nicely. Now, the fun bit is I'm going to take the bodice and flip it over the sleeve like this. This is called setting in a sleeve. Now I want to line up the middle of my gathering. Gathering stitches out of, or gathering threads out of the way to the shoulder seam. This is the shoulder seam of the bodice. Lining up the middle of my gathering to that. And I'm again going to pin it on the sleeve side with the pin going up and down that direction. Now I can see where my sleeve sets into the armhole and I can pin all the way around it. Now in this case the gathers were actually pretty accurate and it's I think it's actually going to fit spot on so I don't need to pull those gathers any tighter. Um, they're pretty good but this is where you would start to maybe even start to line it up from the bottom and then as you get to this side top bit uh, start to look into whether you need to pull those gathers a bit tighter or a bit looser to make it fit. I just like to get the threads out of my way as I go so I don't sew it on top of them. So the reason I pin this way is so that when I come to the sewing machine, because I'm going to have to put it in as a tight circle here, if I have them going down this way, it's going to stop me from being able to turn it around so much and more likely to prick me. Um, and also I can't sew, you, on the sleeve you do want to be able to really use those pins to hold it in place. Um, it's extra important. So I'm not going to be able to have them holding my fabric in place as long because I'll need to take them out a lot sooner before I sew up to them. Whereas on these ones, I can sew really close before I need to take the pin out. Just, um, an additional little tip when you're setting in a sleeve um, is to roll it over your hand this way. That's I don't know how complex I need to get right now, but um, it just allows the sleeve to be the bigger part um, and to be slightly gathered in to the, to the armhole, uh, and that just looks better. You never want to have a sleeve that's tighter in the shoulder than the armhole is. All right, so you can see the pins I have around there now. I'm going to put this in the sewing machine this way. I have, which is my habit, I like to start over that bottom seam. But you don't have to because it's going to do the full circle anyway. It's just my habit, I like to start over there. It's also the flatter area, so it's kind of good to just get your bearings of sewing it around there first.
Now take your time as you sew over the gathered bit to pull the gathers down into place as you're going um, because if they're sort of going to the side too much or going up you're actually going to be stitching them in an awkward spot and it just doesn't look as pretty from the right side of the fabric. So now you can see how the sleeve is going to look on the right side of the fabric. This sleeve is also going to get gathered in. I'm going to use some elastic to gather that. Uh, and then I'll just go and do the other sleeve. Once you've got it stitched and you're happy with it, you can cut off those gathered stitches, those gathering stitches. If you want to, you can unpick the actual stitches. Uh, you don't need to, they can stay in. But you can cut off those loose ends. So now we've got two sleeves attached to our bodice. Um, it's really, there's a multiple of things we could go on to next. I think what I'll do next is do a little hem. So I've already done an overlocked edge on here. Um, so all I have to do is just a tiny little turn and I'm just gonna hem around it that way. So to do the elastic part on the sleeve, um, there's multiple ways we could do this, but um, firstly, take the cut piece of elastic and we're just gonna sew it together just with a little overlap. Um, you could do a zigzag or a straight stitch. I'm just gonna do a straight stitch, doing lots of up and down, up and down, up and down. Now, there should be a line, or at least part of a line drawn on the sleeve where this is going to go. So best practice would be to line up that seam that you've just done over the seam that's there, just to keep all the messy bits together. Now we want to find the center of that with the top of the sleeve and line that up so it'll be even distance on both sides. <laughs> going to put a pin in the uh, center piece between these two so if we fold it in half this way the middle of these two bits and the middle of these two bits we're going to line up and pin this just makes sure that we are gathering it evenly 
I hope I got that on the camera. I apologize if I didn't. I'll make sure I show it to you really clearly before I sew it. Now I've lost my line on this side, so I'm just going to have a quick measure of how far in my line is. So again, I want to take the centre from this part. It can be eyeballed a little bit, you don't have to be exact with it. The centre of the elastic. So now, you've got it pinned in four places. And if you stretched it out, it should be about even. You can do a bit of a you know, test and see and adjust it if you think it needs a bit of adjustment. Now we're going to sew it and we're going to be stretching the elastic as we sew. Um, and sew this on a zigzag stitch too. You could sew it on a variety of stitches. Um, I, I'm going to stick with zigzag though. I do like to start at the seam just to sort of keep those messy bits together in one spot. And because this spot isn't going to stretch much anyway, because it's got the sewing bit over it, uh, it won't matter so much that I am not going to be able to start by stretching it. So I can't really st stretch the elastic first. I've got to do my back stitches first. Now I can start stretching the elastic. So I'll take it from this first pin and I'll stretch it. And just to check that that line is lining up, I'll make sure you can see this with the sewing machine. Make sure that, that uh, the line looks about even distance here. I hope you can see this. And we're going to sew along here. As I get close to that pin, I'm going to move my finger to the next pin and pull that one down. I check that it's all lining up evenly. Take that pin out now and sew this stretch. Coming up to that pin, now I'm going to move to the next pin, stretch it out. Trim the threads off really nice and close to the fabric. And you don't want to have to come back later and go through tidying up all the little ends of threads. It's better to just do it straight away. So there we have one cute little gabbard. Uh, sleeve. Yep, I'm very close to the camera, sorry. There we go. A cute little gathered sleeve. So I'll do the same thing on the other side and then our sleeves are done. Now we're up 
to making the skirt, I'll just point out first that there was one thing on the bodice that we haven't done yet, and that was to finish off the neckline. As you can see at the moment, it's just overlocked around the neck. We're going to leave that for now because I uh, want to see them on the girls before I decide exactly the cut that we're doing for that neckline. So we're going to leave that and move on to the skirt. So for the skirt pieces, you'll see there's two really big rectangles and four long strips. So these two big rectangles are going to form the, uh, the gathered skirt and then these are going to be the little frill down the bottom of the skirt. So all we have to do, it's going to be very simple, is we're going to join these at one of the shorter ends. Uh, they'll be cut on the, uh, well they'll be cut with the whole cross grain of the fabric. So you will have the selvage, so that means you don't need to worry about overlocking it. Uh, but please do make sure when you sew uh, that you are stitching um, in from these dots because we don't want to see the dots on the good side of our fabric. Now this seam that we're going to do is actually going to end up being a centre front seam. I normally wouldn't like a centre front seam on a skirt but I think because this is going to be heavily gathered hopefully it'll just get disguised within the gathers. Um, so once I sew down this with a basic straight stitch seam of course always back stitching um, I'm then just going to press it open and then we'll move on. Now I've sewn that together, so that's made one really, really long strip that's going to become the main body of our skirt. It's going to get um, the gathering treatment that we did to the sleeves along the whole thing, so two lines running all the way along. Um, I also, just while I was doing it, decided to overlock everything now. So I've overlocked the top and the bottom edge because they were the raw edges. The other edges didn't need to be overlocked because they had the selvage, which won't fray. Now I think what's going to be easier, rather than gathering first, is that we attach the frill of the bottom to this before we gather. Now this is the frill is going is double the size, so it's going to get gathered to half its size. So first thing with this I'm going to do is sew all of these strips together to make one very, very long strip. And then I'm going to go and overlock the entirety of the two, the two long ends of that long strip. So that's going to take a while, the very slow job because these overlockers are not the fastest. So it's those times when you wish you had a really speedy overlocker, but it'll just take a bit of patience. And then we will gather these to go onto the big body of the skirt and then we'll gather the big body of the skirt to attach to the bodice and then our skirt uh, then our dress is really coming together so i've got these the whole strip all seamed up you can see the seams there all the way along and make sure that you do all the seams on the same side so you don't have seam on this side in one area and seam on the other side and another on the other area um, and I also have overlocked all of those seams too. Um, also, not the seams. Um, didn't need to overlock the seams because it is on the selvage. Uh, but I did need to overlock all of the long sides on both sides. I've then gone and done the gather stitch, so that on the longest possible stitch that you have, um, the whole way along, and two lines of that running parallel to each other. Now, I need to start to gather this. So I'm going to be pulling the thread from the top because I had it going up this way when I was sewing. So I know I need to pull from where the bobbin threads were. And just pray that they don't snap on me. Try to be really gentle as you go. Um, don't keep tugging too hard. Keep easing the gathering down. Uh, because if one thread snaps, you do need to put that whole thread in again on the sewing machine and <laughs> start again with the gathers. So it is pretty frustrating when a thread snaps. So we keep moving it along and then try and not put too much tension on it. Just let it ease through the fabric.
Okay, so I've got the whole thing gathered and I've laid it out along uh, my skirt here, my body of my skirt. Um, and I've just gone around and just evened up all of the gathers as best as I could. So they don't have to be perfectly even. Uh, because it's gathering to half its size, it's not going to be the tightest gather. It's, um, yeah, it's going to have a little bit of a few spots that aren't super tightly gathered. So you just want to try and ease it to make it fairly even. And notice that down here, there's a few bits that are a bit too, too sparse with their gathers. So I'm trying to even those bits up a bit. And I've pinned it, oh, I'm about to pin it on um, to the skirt. So this is the right side of the skirt facing up this way and the right side of the gathered frill bit facing down. So the right side of the getter. And I'm going to pin this in place. And then I'm going to do uh, just one line of stitching and making sure that that line of stitching comes uh, more in from the seam than that last line of gathers. Similar to what we did with the sleeves because we don't want to see uh, that line of gathers on our fabric, on the, the side of our skirt. So a few pins in here just to hold it in the right place and then I'll go and sew. So the next step of the skirt, after we have stitched on our uh, little flounce piece, our gathered piece onto here as a seam, our next step is to now gather the entire top piece. Um, so we're going to do normal gathering stitches all along the very top and this is going to be um, do it quite close to the edge, but then do the second one almost at the one and a half centimetre seam allowance or a little bit shorter than that, so that we can't see it when we can't see it poking out when we do the seam. Then we're going to pull all of those threads until they are as uh, to the width of our waistline of the bodice. So we'll use this as our guide when we're gathering them. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and do two long stitches on the biggest length possible. So on these machines that's four, on some machines you might have five or even up to six. That's for length not width. Uh, and then I'll gather all of those up. So you'll watch me gather in a second. So my gathering stitch is in and they're about um, half a centimetre apart from each other. Now I'm going to gather the whole thing up. Now because when I was sewing it, my fabric was going through the machine with the right side facing upwards, uh, that means my bobbin threads are on the underneath side now, and they're the best ones to pull. It will work if you pull the top threads, uh, but the bobbin threads, just the way that they get looped around, they're easier to pull for the gather. So when you are able to remember which ones were your top threads and which ones were your bobbin threads, always best to pull the bobbin threads. And taking it slowly and carefully, the same way you did with the flounce piece or the ruffles down the bottom, because you don't want them to break or you have to put the threads in all over again. So just take your time. Now, to start with, I've gathered this up as tight as it will gather, but that might be too tight. So I can already look at this and say that's probably going to be a little bit too small. So the best thing to do is to start measuring it on and gradually ease out some of the gathers as you go so that it's the right size of this. It's not too far off actually, so I'll be pinning this on as I adjust the gathers. So my pin. So I'll find an approximate centre, and there, 
Now I'm putting this on, so I might mark the centre with a pin. Now I'm getting the bodice, the waist seam of the bodice, so this bottom bit of it here. Um, and I've got the right side of it. So this is the darts on the right side, the sleeves are out nicely on this side. And this is the centre front. I can easily find the centre of the centre front because it was placed on a fold and I've got a little mark line there. So I can line up the centre front with that middle pin that I had. And I can start to work out from here how much I need to ease out my gathers. So I need an extra inch and a half there. So I just ease out a few of these gathers like this. Take your time to just sort of check that the gathers are even all around. Get it to the right length and then just make the gathers nice and even. Get the same amount of fullness everywhere. On some things that you sew, sometimes you actually want more fullness at the back. Um, this is a very common one. It's a more flattering place to have a lot of the gathers. Um, or having more at the back and the front and less on the sides. Just depends on the design. Just need to ease out a few more. Now, on this edge bit here, hopefully I'm showing that on camera, with the selvage, I want to leave that bit without gathering to it because the zip's going to go in there. So I don't want the zip um, seam allowance section to have gathers in it because it's just going to make it all chunky and difficult. But the bodice also has the seam allowance for the zip. So they can be nice and flat together, those two sections. So as I work this along, I'm just going to be Fitting it in place. Like this. And in this case, I've pulled out my gathers too much, so I'm just going to pull them back in again until it's the right size. Just keep gradually adjusting it until those two ends. I know it's hard to see the white on white, but those two ends sit flush on each other. That's a needle, not a pin. I've been finding a lot of those lately. Now I don't I can tie off these threads if I want to and then break them off. Sometimes it's handy to do that. Um, they don't really serve any purpose once I've sewn the seam down, so it doesn't matter if they fall out once the seam has been sewn. Alright, so that's one side and I'll do the same to the other side. sew this seam. So when sewing any gathering seam or any uh, seam that's got one part gathered, you do want to keep making sure as you sew, I think I pointed this out with the sleeves or with another section, that you're pulling the gathers down and into place as you sew over them because otherwise um, you get sections where some of the gathers will be pulled up like this and from the right side, it's just going to make really messy sections that will kind of be all over the place. Um, so yeah, just important to take your time. I'm just going to adjust my length. So I've just adjusted my length. Uh, so it's just on length of about two to two and a half. So try not to sew too fast. Following your 5-8 guideline five eighths of an inch close to about one and a half centimeters take the pins out as you go 
you can see I've pinned in this direction that's so that I can sew right up to the pins technically you can sew over them when they're in this position but it is still safest to take them out as you go back stitch of course I did sew over that first pin you can see it was fine the first one. And just take your time to underneath make sure those gathers are nicely down in that first spot that you're going to sew really well in place before you actually sew that section. decide on the fitting exactly where I want the neckline to be and then we'll just be sewing the zip in and uh, where the zip finishes we'll be seaming the back edge as well uh, and then the dress will be all finished so we're nearly there 